Hey everyone, this is John with the Active Towns channel, and I am here in Rotterdam today with a special guest. Hey! hey. <laughs> How are you? Who are you? Hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Jose, Jose Besselink. I'm an urban planner. I've been working for the city of Rotterdam for over 16 years now. And I'm involved in both walking and cycling. So active towns, that's my field of work. Yeah, active towns, your field of work. Now, where are we at? We're someplace very, very special right now. Yeah, we are standing right in front of the central station. It was opened 10 years ago. And before, uh, we are now standing here on a quite attractive square where people are on top. But before it was dominated by cars, trams, taxis, buses. It was packed with traffic here. Yeah. And now uh, it is like a red carpet inviting people to walk into the city center. Right, yeah. So it's not just a, a station on its own. Right. It's about the complete area and the area development around the station. Right, right. And you, you sort of alluded to it is we're, we're up here on you know, this beautiful, if I pan around, we, we, we see, you know, we've got lots of stuff happening up here at this level. You, you called it sort of like that red carpet of welcoming you to the city. Mm -hmm. um, what's underneath us right now? A bicycle parking. Yeah. Of course, also a car parking. Okay. But this car parking has been important as an instrument right. in order to create more space for people on the streets. Right. We had a strategy to eliminate 3,000 uh, number of car parkings right. to create more, well, attractive space on the street. Yeah. And of course, um, in the Netherlands, we know that around 40% uh, of people commuting by train, they travel to the station by bike. Right. So this is why we need to facilitate bike parking in the station areas, and that's also why the city, in uh, collaboration with the national government and the railway uh, company, mm -hmm. we've been constructing uh, well, a very nice bicycle parking underneath the square, underneath the central station. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to be out riding um, on the streets and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that transformation that has taken place here in the city of Rotterdam. Um, but the city of Rotterdam, as a city within the Netherlands, has a very unique history. Talk a little bit about the history of, of the city and the relevance, you know, especially coming back from World War II. Yeah, so back in World War II, the city center was completely bombed. There were just a few buildings left, like the, the city hall that we will pass by today. Uh, but other than that, um, the, the, the urban planners back then kind of had to rebuild the city from scratch. And they had a blank canvas, which turned out to, well, for the city to become the most modern city in the Netherlands, but also the most car dominant city in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, there was a little bit of a movement too, because if I recall many cities throughout the Netherlands, uh, including Amsterdam and, and Rotterdam too, they kind of had plans pre-baked even before the war yeah. of thinking about transforming the cities into modernist sort of areas. And so Rotterdam was really the only city that from the ground up, you know, from the, during the war, they realized that vision. Unfortunately, that wasn't a very people-oriented vision. Not what really. happened? What, what, how, did, how did the city learn that maybe that wasn't the right way to go? Well, over time, we learned because there were few people living in the city center yeah. to start with. So after, let's say, six o'clock in the evening, it was so quiet um, and we wanted to, well, be, the, the city to become more lively and we need people for that. So we started to uh, recreate and rethink uh, our, well, plans and visions and ambitions where we started to put people more at center. Right. So it was, well, uh, in the beginning of 2000 mm -hmm. and then later on in 2008 when yeah. we have implemented the city lounge concept. Right. Okay. And this has been very important in the transformation of the city center where we wanted the city center to be the so-called lounge of the city, yeah. uh, to be more attractive for the people living there. We, part of the strategy was actually to densify the city center. Mm -hmm. As I said, there were few people living here. Right. 
But, um, well, we have been delivering. You can see, for example, over there, the reddish uh, buildings. Yeah. It's all apartment blocks that were added. Um, and we will, today we will see more of those examples. So after 2000, we've seen an increase of about 25% of the amount of inhabitants, uh, residents living here in the city center. Right. And that has changed a lot. At the same time, uh, we started also to invest in public space. So trying to redo the mistakes that were made back, back then. And we are still working on that, by the way. It's yeah. not done yet. Um, but I think we've taken some huge steps forward. And this uh, area where we are standing now is one of those examples. So the central station area was redesigned, but also streets connecting to here and connecting important destinations within the city, within the city center, where we are prioritizing people. So adding more green, adding more benches for people to sit on, not only for a coffee at a terrace, uh, but also wider sidewalks, better cycling infrastructure, bicycle parking. So it's a comprehensive approach on public space and the built environment. I love it. All right, let's go see it. Great. And wait for the tram. Ah, this is a good example. We get yeah. the, the tram through the greenery, which is a nice way to soften up. You had mentioned it earlier, adding some green elements. Exactly. To the area. Yeah. So adding more green is, we do that on different levels. It's huge projects where we are able to, well, greenify the area, but we do also rooftops, schoolyards, and for example, these tram tracks too. Well, it's so much more attractive and climate adaptive um, when it's green instead yeah. of concrete. Yeah. There's just something special about seeing a tram on grass too. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely, huh? Brings a smile to your face. Let's go to the right here. Okay. We can cross. And then we'll go to the left here. So here's this bike parking that I showed you with the great art. Oh yeah. So that was a, another, we're, we're seeing, this is a city run bike parking? Yes, okay. it is. Excellent. And what's actually nice to show before we enter the mm -hmm. bike park, this is the Leinbahn. Yeah. And this was the first pedestrianized shopping area in okay. Europe. And by that, I believe uh, in the world. Oh, wow. Um, and we're, today we will talk about cycling and mm -hmm. walking. Yeah, yeah. In the Netherlands, we are a cycling country, but We've kind of, well, we mm -hmm. tend to forget about people walking. Right, right. Well, a mutual friend of ours, Chris Bruntlett, likes to call uh, riding a bike the Dutch way is like pedestrian plus. It is pedestrian yeah. plus. Yeah. And, and I mean, and as so, soon yeah. as you've parked yeah. your bike here, you yeah. become a pedestrian, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and also the way that we typically see people riding, it's not a race. It's pedestrian plus. It's just a little faster than walking, you know, two yeah. or three times as fast. And so there is people yeah, yeah. on road bikes here, but there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it is on a yeah. in a relaxed pace. Right, right, yeah, yeah. typically. Yeah. yeah. So and let's see, and let's, let's, let's walk see. into yeah. the bike park. Yeah. Fantastic. And so the thing that you notice right away in here is the bright colors that we have in here, and it's uh, it's out of the elements. You're getting the bike yeah. out of the rain exactly. um, and, and away from the public space that we saw over here. So yeah, this is quite nice. Now I noticed that the racks are all single level, but at, this, at any point in time when the capacity is needed, oh, yeah. you could we always can definitely add the, add the double layer. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and um, this is part of uh, our parking strategy. Mm -hmm. So we have one huge parking facility underneath the central uh, station, underneath right. the square. But we want to uh, uh, facilitate bike parking on all different levels. Right. So it's connected to public transit. Yeah. But also for like here, for example, we are standing here in the area of where people go shopping. Right. 
it's about parking in the neighborhood, on street as well. Mm -hmm. We will see an example at Col Single where we, in the this redesign of the streets, mm -hmm. the, we were lacking budget to mm -hmm. uh, add a proper bike parking facility. So right. we now have to um, facilitate that otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So here, for example, this is on a good location uh, mm -hmm. and we decided we need to make it also a bit more comfortable and attractive. So mm -hmm. that's why we added uh, this piece of art. Yeah, yeah, very nice. I like it. And one more thing about the bike parking. Um, part of the strategy, of course, is to provide, you know, convenient, secure bike parking, which is going to give a sense of safety for people for, you know, not having their bikes stolen. Yeah, especially if you, you've got an expensive bike, you know. Yeah, and then also just freeing up more space for pedestrians, too. Yeah, it's a two-way uh, approach. Yes, yeah. So here we are approaching the Hofplein uh, roundabout, mm -hmm. which is a roundabout, okay. uh, but not for long anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. So here we see huge amount of space for cars. Mm -hmm. There's also a tram riding here, which okay. is very important for the city, the public transit network. Mm -hmm. uh, but this square is going to be redesigned from well, soon next year on. Okay. And it's going to be uh, actual square. Okay. With lots of green, with with proper bike lanes and yeah. uh, an, a nice area for people just to stay and enjoy mm -hmm. the city. Yeah. Um, it's also related to our climate adaptation program. Mm -hmm. So there will be. Um, water storage underneath ah. there's going to be added a lot of trees right. so if you come back in a few years time mm -hmm. we should film here yeah <laughs> we'll do that, that yeah. I, I love it when i can come back and see the next phase the actual change <laughs> the yeah actual change yeah yeah so yeah because this is a very big space i can see how you'd want to like create this space into more of a square and de-emphasize the movement of motor yeah. vehicles in and that sense. Do you hear the noise? Yeah, the noise, yeah. So I hope that by redesigning this square, mm -hmm. it becomes a more soft area, you know? Right. Where right. you can just sit and enjoy and uh, sometimes, uh, in, well, unconsciously, mm -hmm. this noise of traffic mm -hmm. is really annoying. It's a, it, not only is it annoying, it's also bad for health. Bad too. for health. Yeah, we, yeah. we do have uh, epidemiological studies exactly. and medical studies that show that that persistence of motor vehicle noise uh, is very, very bad for health. If you are sleeping, you know, in some of these buildings where you're yeah. submitted to that noise, yeah, you have your your sleep quality is is not as good. So yeah. yeah. So not yeah. even to talk about air quality. Yeah. So the mobility transition mm -hmm. related to these topics as mm -hmm. uh, noise, uh, air quality, mm -hmm. climate adaptation. Right. We try to all connect those yeah. uh, topics. Yeah. And health, you were mentioning health. Yeah. This is something we've been really trying to relate uh, approach on active mobility to health. Right. Uh, we are redesigning our streets and this entices people to just go out for a walk more or yeah. to go and sit in a in a park yeah, um, yeah. and if only if you're looking at green yeah that's yeah. good for your mental health as well yeah 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 so this will be a very interesting uh, case study to see how this gets softened up how you're still able to have the trams coming through you'll still have people walking and biking through the area uh, but just de-emphasizing the amount of pavement, you'll have that water storage. Yeah. And I think you're, to your point, it's it's great that it's not just one thing. You're as a city, you're you're realizing you're you're hitting all of these key factors. Uh, you know. Exactly. And so there's many benefits. There is many yeah. benefits. Yeah. yeah. So this is the next step yeah. we are taking. The Hofplein Square is part of a bigger program. Mm -hmm. The city is investing in seven big green city projects. Okay. Uh, because we know we are facing climate change and heat stress. Right. All those topics that we were uh, talking about. Yeah. 
Um, and the city decided to invest in some area developments right. that are of importance for the people in the area that are living there, the residents, but also for the visitors of our city. Yeah. Uh, we are now standing right next to one of the previous big projects of the city, mm -hmm. which is the Coal Single, mm -hmm. the, um, one of the main routes through the city center. Right. It is through the city center and you, it used to be a main route for car traffic through right. the city center. Yeah. We found out that um, it was car drivers uh, that were actually also well able to drive around it. Right. But it was too easy to just ride across the, um, yeah. the city. And we decided, um, because there's also a lot of people cycling here, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a uh, pedestrian area as yeah. well. So we redesigned this yeah. street in favor of the more dominant mode, model sh um, uh, sh mode shares. Right, right. So that is cyclists and pedestrians yeah. besides the tram track. Right, right. So the tram track is still here in the middle of the street. Right. We have eliminated uh, uh, car lanes mm -hmm. uh, and by doing so we were able to widen the uh, bike path and to create a very wide sidewalk as well. And it has now become well a way more friendly street through the city. Fantastic. Do we get to go see it? Yeah, let's go there. Let's go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So there's the city hall on your yeah. left hand side. Oh right, yeah. So this remained. It survived. And the here on your right, yeah. there's the pop-up bike parking. Oh, pop-up bike park bike parking here. In front of the grocery store, well. of course. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe wow. we can just stop here for a bit. And as we're rolling down before we stop, um, this is very wide. This is wide, huh? Yes. Yeah, yes. wide sidewalk. Nice. A wide bike lane, yeah. trees, so it's such a comfortable ride. Yeah. This is my ride to the city office. Right, yeah, yeah. And we see kids out here as well. Yeah. So, and lots of trees. Lots of trees as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So I'm noticing, I'm noticing the color is a little different on this cycle path. What's the story? Yeah, like uh, in the Netherlands, you're used to ride on a red colored bike lane, but here it's more yellowish. At least on this one. On this yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, this is an exception, yeah, to be yeah. honest. And yeah. this was from a design perspective mm -hmm. to, well, the yellow color uh, mm -hmm. fitted better in the area with the, the, um, uh, the city hall. Ah, okay. So it was actually not from a cycling network. Mobility perspective. From mobility was, perspective, yeah, yeah. but more, well, the yellow color. Yeah, 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 a little bit of the yellow <laughs> that, color. That suits the environment, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just always curious about that. Yeah. Like, I'll see <laughs> it on We get that question more often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some more of the pop-up bike some parking. Some more, yeah, because uh, in the initial plan, we added um, a bike parking. Let's go to right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but due to a lack of budget, yeah, we were well not able, yeah, to create this bike parking. Right. Unfortunately, because yeah. this is what happens now. Yeah. People are coming on their bikes here, and right. they are just parking them randomly right. on the pavement. Right. Which is, in terms of accessibility, mm -hmm. not a good thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we understand that there's a bit of nostalgia of, you know, bikes kind of littered everywhere. But again, from a walkability perspective, from an accessibility perspective, we want to make sure that we're not blocking pathways and uh, creating undue 
potentially dangerous clutter. Yeah. And so being able to create some pop-up um, bike parking and really, I think from a human behavior perspective, sort of reinforcing that the idea is that you find where the city has identified parking mm -hmm. for the bike so that you can control that yep. and, and then make it safer and more inviting for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. In, and also to add those bike parking facility on, on logical destinations in the cycling network. Right, yeah. So our approach uh, in the, the cycling program, it has three pillars. It's about cycling infrastructure, creating a comprehensive network on all levels. Right. Then connect it to the bike parking strategy. And then the third objective is to uh, entice people to go out on a bike ride and right. we have a cycling encouragement program on that. Yeah, yeah. Now we are seeing some motor vehicles traveling through this space so it's not as if they've been completely banned from the city. They are still They're, they're welcome still here. here, they're still welcome here. What was this street like prior to this transformation? What did we, what would you see if we were here? Well, uh, it was actually the um, design that you see across the street, mm -hmm. it, it was similar on this side as well. Mm -hmm. So there were um, narrow bike lanes on mm -hmm. both sides of the street. Okay. Uh, the sidewalk has always been quite uh, okay, wide. Okay, so it was a generous sidewalk. Right? Yeah, yep. I mean, we do have lots of space here. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing is that we just eliminated a few car lanes mm -hmm. in favor of uh, cycling and walking. Right, fantastic. But I guess this really kind of is another great example for other car-centric cities. When you have incredibly wide rights-of-way like this, you can redefine them, you can reimagine yeah. them, you can take what was previously a motor vehicle travel lane and make it more accessible for people on bikes. Yeah. So I believe it's a matter of choice. Yeah. In lots of cities, we do not have a lack of space. Right. We have a lack of bold decision makers. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What's next? Next, we'll cycle a little bit further down this road and we'll uh, turn to uh, the right and I'll show you some other examples where we have invested in um, well, cycling friendly um, quick wins. Okay. Because we believe that it's not only about these huge investments in public space, it's mm -hmm. also the small interventions that are making the difference uh, in people's daily lives. I love it. Let's do Let's it. Let's go. All right. This is a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're popping up in, uh, in the United States every, uh, everywhere too, yeah. yes, yes. We'll turn right here. Okay. So I told you about these seven city projects. Mm -hmm. Hofplein is one of them. Okay. And this area, it's supposed to become a park. Okay. So on one side of the street, we want to again eliminate car lanes. Right. And then add a lot of more green here. Right. This one is more on the long run. We need to prioritize uh, also in terms of uh, budget. So the first project that's going to start will be Hofplein and this one is on the uh, agenda as well. Okay, okay. Oh, here, this one, the bike parklet. One of uh, our interventions, mm -hmm. I told you about uh, the parking strategy and that we need to invest on all different levels mm -hmm. in bike parking. Right. We found out back in the time uh, when we were launching our um, bike strategy mm -hmm. 
At the same time, we were still aiming for eliminating on-street car parking. Mm -hmm. And in a specific neighborhood here in the city center, there were people asking for more bike parking in right. their neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And that was the moment when we, me and a couple of colleagues of mine, we yeah. invented a bike parklet. Yeah. Um, let's, let's go look at it real Let's close. go look yeah. at it. Let me park this bicycle in a proper way because this is not good for the... <laughs> The wheel. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. This looks it's, better. It's it's uh, it's it's having channel. So this is fascinating. So this is, uh, you know, something you helped design, and exactly. it's a modular type of thing. It is a modular system. Yeah, brilliant. And people can either apply for it mm -hmm. when they have uh, gathered uh, some signatures in their neighborhood, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the city itself can add uh, a parklet whenever we feel there's the need for it. Right, right. As soon as the bike parklet is in installed, a uh, trial period of more or less three months starts. Mm -hmm. Right. If we don't get complaints, sometimes obviously we do get some complaints, mm -hmm. but um, the, if, if it is as we wanted it to be, uh, if the bike parklet is working when it's useful, yeah. then the city can make it permanent. Fantastic. So it became a tool, an instrument, right. as a tactical intervention, right. but part of our strategy to create this city lounge, right. to create more space for bike parking, right. in a way that we change people's mindsets, right. not by immediately adding more bike parking, mm -hmm. but in a tactical way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tactical. It's innovative. You can see that, again, it just takes up a parking spot. You're able to now have many more people served. Many yes. more. It's more or less 10 bicycles yeah. over one car. Over one car. So Brilliant. Yes. There's around 90 of these platforms rotating through town. Okay. So it started as a pilot in one neighborhood, yeah. and yeah. now it became a tool in our, in our citywide uh, toolbox. Brilliant. Oh, and here, this is also interesting, the mm -hmm. green. Uh, that used to be parking spots. Mm -hmm. So adding more green uh, in terms of climate adaptation, but right. also to create a more attractive street. When right. you're cycling here, it's way more attractive yeah. when it's along a green a, area. As well as when you're at the, the cafe, it's much more in, uh, welcoming to have exactly. a, a little bit of green there. Yeah. Yeah. So this crossing we're entering here is an example of these small interventions that we did for cyclists. There's more space, more waiting space. Because um, we've seen an increase in the amount of cyclists. And at some points, it was too packed with people in this waiting area, for uh, waiting for the light to turn green. Yeah. So there's a couple of intersections where um, we started to invest in widening those, those areas. Right. And it also in terms of uh, safety. Right, yeah, yeah. It's a good problem to have. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Needing more space for more people for active mobility. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very good. So let's cross and then stop here on the sidewalk so you can see. Now we need some cyclists to use this space. <laughs> so yeah, I can see the widened area there. You've, you've sort of broadened it. Exactly. Yeah. So you see how this has been widened here. And then up ahead, you've, you see it's kind of over here and over there, a little bit wider. Yeah, get, getting, getting just a few more people through 
you're making that little waiting area right there just a little bit more comfortable and uh, yeah you can get more people through yeah because we believe that uh, investing in cycling is not only about adding bike lanes mm -hmm. it's also these crossings that are very important in the in the network mm -hmm. and to make it more comfortable for people to find their way to to ride in a smooth way yeah so it's around 25 crossings that we invest in uh, every year yeah and it's these type of interventions where we are widening the, the waiting space mm -hmm. for cyclists but also where um, the amount of times that cyclists get green yeah. in the in the total cyclists of the yeah, this yeah. intersection yeah when is typically uh, this this type of intersection, when is typically the peak number of people traveling through here? Is that typically in the evening time for the rush? I would say morning and evening morning time, and like evening yeah, time. the rush hours uh, when yeah, people yeah. are traveling to work and then in the evening when they're going back home. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we are now a bit late to see the, the yeah. morning rush hour for cyclists, but right. then it's packed here. With yeah, yeah, it's good. And again, the, the whole point here is that we were getting cues that were backing so far up that it was, it was then starting to uh, interfere with this cycle track and the flow that ne you know, needs to happen this way. So widening that up just makes that possible so that you yeah. create a safer situation for the tr through traveling yeah. uh, and, uh, and people and on So bikes. it enables the flows in both directions. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah. it. That's great. Next We're turning to the right here, okay. and now we are entering the area of the, the museums. Okay. When the city was reconstructed, um, after the World War, it was also divided by functions, so areas for living, areas for working, and this was the museum area. Okay. This street was just redesigned, it's just opened up. People are now walking here on the street where it used to be a car lane. Right. It's shared space. Again, more green, benches, bicycle parking, and an attractive area for people. Right. And all in an environment with impressive architecture. So we can ride to the left to see ourselves mirrored in this fantastic building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we are, folks, <laughs> rolling up. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a very interesting uh, transition. We, we came off of a really, really busy uh, street. We had lots of... Uh, infrastructure obviously for a while there and then we moved into a you know just sort of a, a very well uh, designed street in terms of it was beautiful with pavers and all that then we turned into this environment where we have as you, you described it it's shared space we had a motor vehicle behind us that person was being very patient for us and so it all worked out just fine but yeah as you mentioned people felt comfortable walking in the middle of the street. Yeah. Yeah. That's what so it's a 15 kilometer an hour mm -hmm. zone. Okay. Uh, it's not through traffic so cars are able to uh, drive into the area but it's for example for delivery uh, right. or yeah. so no through traffic but completely redesigned from the perspective of people right. people walking or cycling or people uh, just lingering, sitting yeah. and enjoy the city. Yeah. And that all um, in an area combined with these um, yeah. well, impressive buildings. This yeah. is the uh, depot from the, from the museum, right. which is a 
a, a piece of art on its own, right, I right. would say. Yeah, yeah. So Rotterdam has, well, we became famous for for the modern architecture here in the city. Right. And when we are redeveloping areas, it's always a combined approach, a strategy, not only to add a specific building, right. but also to create more attractive public space in the areas surrounding it. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier too, the early designs were a separation of uses and uh, you addressed it earlier is that you realize, oh, we need more people actually living here. So more of an integration of getting more housing into these areas and shortening those distances traveled. So that's part of it too. More is, of an integration, yeah, exactly, of an integration. and more yeah. mixed use. Yeah, yeah. That's what we've been focusing on since more or less 2008 when we've launched yeah. this city lounge strategy. Yeah, yeah. So mixed use, um, investment in public space, investment yeah. uh, uh, kind of accelerating this mobility transition that we are facing. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's more than just really mobility too when you sense, get the sense of just bringing more housing into, so you can be close to these cultural institutions like we see here and yeah. the other architecture that you're talking about, the meaningful destinations. Uh, you know, you, you had mentioned earlier, you know, adding more housing. You, you've added, what, over 25% more residents, right, to yep. the area? Since yeah. 2000, Wow, more that's or less. impressive. That is impressive. And yeah. that's one of the reasons why we have seen the city change, yeah. why we now see way more people on streets. Yeah. How and many more sense, How many more do you want to bring in? How many more? Well, yeah, you, need, you, you, you need a lot. I know. Yeah. I know there's a housing shortage in Rotterdam. There is in yeah. in the Netherlands in general. Uh, to be honest, I'm not that good at numbers. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there but is more to be yeah. added. Yeah. yeah. More is good. Yeah. 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 More is a good way to, to say it. In so. a proper way, I would say. Yes. Yeah. So we always have like uh, these vision on where to add more housing mm -hmm. and also on what type of buildings. We, for example, also have a high rise. Uh, vision mm -hmm. so it's not allowed to just add uh, a building just somewhere, yeah, somewhere uh, it, yeah. it's all been thought of yeah, yeah and then related to that mobility mobility is just a means right um, the aim of the city is to create a more healthy and attractive city yeah. and by doing so um, mobility if it is uh, about public transit cycling walking or car traffic yeah. it needs to facilitate the area or the area development or the people that are living in that specific area yeah and one of the reasons why we have been investing in more cycling infrastructure mm -hmm is because of that, because we want it to um, become more people friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really not about the bike, it's about becoming more people-oriented. It's people just oriented. a means. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Here, it's um, the bone earth. Uh, area okay. that yep. the leaving, Dutch have become famous of. Yes, leaving that shared space area yeah. there. Yeah. We will now cross the street and then turn left. Okay. This is the Erasmus Hospital, Erasmus University. Ah, one okay. of the well, biggest hospitals in the city and also the biggest employer. Okay. And uh, what's interesting, we are also collaborating with them regarding cycling. Okay. They are stimulating their employers to come to work by bike. We are collaborating in Rotterdam with other partners in the city in creating a more, well, a, a cycle friendly city and they are partner the um, the Feyenoord football stadium for example is partner we have over 60 organizations that are collaborating with us and amongst others the hospital yeah. and here the area was redesigned as well yeah. 
You can see the brick stones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially when you're in the hospital um, or when you're going to the hospital, that needs to be a welcoming environment. Right, yes. So colleagues of mine, there are also experts. We were saying there's lots of wind today and yeah. with these high rise buildings. Yeah. Part of high rise development is also a wind study. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> so with the hospital uh, and the employee parking, is there underground parking? Is there a parking garage for the employees? Yes, there is. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And how about visitors? Do they have uh, a secure parking uh, too? Visitors, they park uh, on street. Okay. And I believe there's also one uh, indoors. Okay. And there's a specific one for the employees. Okay. So that's clearly one of those areas that, that I try to profile on active towns is for hospitals and medical centers and universities, you know, be thinking about not just the employees, but also the visitors, you know, doing some strategies to really encourage yeah, those trips too. Yeah, complete package on that. Yeah, complete we'll package. We'll turn left here. Nice. I see some cycle hoops here. Some, oh yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> the covered uh, bike parking the is. Covered bike parking, yeah. People can apply for one. Okay. Um, in these areas, we see a lack of indoor parking facilities um, in, well, in people's houses. Right. So that's why people can apply for one of those cycle hoops. hoops. Yeah, cycle hoops. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Is there a policy now in Rotterdam that when new construction comes along that they provide indoor bike parking? There is. Okay. Um, yeah, sort the, of the development code or something. Yeah. Like a parking By the way, this is yeah. one of these other uh, crossings that was improved. And again, this is a, a good example for car-centric cities, especially North American cities, is you can see that there's, there is lots of space still available for, for the cars. Yeah, it's not either or. Yeah, we are still or. welcoming cars here. We're turning left. Yeah. But we, uh, at the same time, we do invest in proper cycling infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, I always say that Rotterdam is such a good example for other cities around the globe. We are kind of the most American-like city in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. would and this is be. why uh, we were inspired by America, by New York City. Yeah. This uh, area development turned to the right here, and then left. This is called Little C. Uh, around 300 uh, houses, apartments that were added here. Yeah. Um, on, um, indoor parking facilities for both bikes and cars. Right. See how attractive these yeah. inner courtyards oh, are. Oh yeah, fantastic. And you feel immediately the silence. Yes, yeah. The, Especially uh, the now. human skill of this area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as With the motor stopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. It, it, you get a, you're get sheltered. That big street is just right over there. Yeah. But immediately the silence and then the softening the of green, all the green. The yeah. Space for bike parking. Yeah. So it's a combined uh, development of housing, yeah. offices, uh, and bars and restaurants. Bars and, and restaurants, yeah. Those are facing yeah. The harbor basin. Yeah, the, the harbor is right up here. Where uh, an impressive new park was added as well. Right, right. Yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. you see some of the cafe tables right over yeah. there. Yeah. White sidewalk. Yeah. Green. Space for outdoor seating. Yeah. 
And then when you cross the street, there's um, a white bike lane. Yeah. And there used to be a tram track here, yeah. which wasn't used anymore. Right. Um, so the city was able to redesign the street and there's now only one car lane, mm -hmm. a 30 kilometer, kilometer an hour right. zone. Yeah. And by that we were able to create more space for cyclists to add this bike lane yeah. and important also to add more green. Yeah, and this is just a delightful pedestrian experience too. Being able to walk through here, being able to walk right to the waterway here in the harbor. I've been working for the city for over 16 years now. Yeah, over 16 years. In the 16 years, you must have just seen so much transformation. How does it make you feel to see something like this and be able to show an American this environment? <laughs> I can only think of one word. It makes yeah. me proud. Yeah. I think it's such an impressive change that the city yeah. has made and that it is possible. And that's what I think is important to share with the active town's mm -hmm. followers, yeah. that a city can actually change. Yeah, 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 absolutely, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and that was, that was perfect timing too, is the mom. And a, there's a time check, it's 10.22. Oh so yeah, we Just we, uh, letting you know where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, good. We're on schedule. Good. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did this before. We, uh, well, get a lot of delegations from all over. Yeah, yeah. With good reason, you guys have a lot to be proud of here. Yeah. Yeah. So we're now cycling through a park. Can you imagine the place that used to be, well, concrete area for cars? Yeah. And the city is investing, as I said, in active mobility. Mm -hmm. And it goes hand in hand with investments in green. Right. So over the past four years or so, we have added the equivalent of 30 soccer fields of green in the city. Wow. And the current administration is about to add the same amount. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in times of climate change, pressure on public space, we, green is the answer to so, mu so many things. We can right. tick so many boxes by investing in green in our cities. Yeah. And I see that there's a commitment to uh, a pretty good amount of wildflowers and, yeah. and letting things grow. And so, yeah, just really rich and colorful too. I mean, and it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a, a green agenda. Mm -hmm. And in this agenda, we are collaborating mm -hmm. with climate adaptation program, but also yeah. biodiversity. So right. this is why you see these nice, flowers, bee friendly. Yeah, yeah, bee friendly, yeah, the <laughs> pollinators, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so biodiversity, climate adaptation, the greening program, right. mobility right. and health. Right. So that again is a comprehensive approach yeah. uh, on both investments in our public space yeah. and also in, on investment in people. Right to entice people to go out for a walk, to go out for a bike ride. Yeah. And what better to do is then to go out for a bike ride in those lovely green areas here. Yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that you have to have every trip be that walking or biking trip, but the more that we can make it pleasant and enjoyable and comfortable, the more trips that will get taken. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Plants here. 
Yeah, the, the green was starting to attack you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it you were was. ducking underneath <laughs> the trees. Yeah. And now we are riding here on a Monday morning. Right, yeah. But on a sunny afternoon or in the weekends, it's packed here with people. Yeah. Is, is this uh, an area where people can swim? Um, actually not. Okay, okay. Because of the vessels that are oh, passing right, by here through. as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's still a working harbor. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Beautiful colors. This is one of the um, city parks, one of the oldest city parks. <clears throat> we are lucky with the weather right away. Yeah, yeah. That's, so far that has been the theme of my trip. Oh, wow. Yeah. But you've pre-ordered that, right? Well, <laughs> I've actually been telling people that I brought the good weather with me. Thank you so much, John. Quite <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I need to, to uh, Thank the lucky stars that uh, I've had good filming weather. Yeah. So yeah, this is just a gorgeous uh, park here that we're rolling past. And I think this is one of the most important things too, is we see the city skyline and we see a high quality active mobility network leading right up to key places, destinations yeah, like the Yeah, connecting park. the key destinations, yeah. also like hospitals, shopping areas, yeah. parks, health centers, schools and what do they say you know the parks and the trees are the lungs of the city yeah yes they are so we yeah. need more lungs yes and we see a transit stop right here so if you want to go to the park you can also take transit the tram and then walk across the street and there you are i think it's also worth you know pointing out that this corridor that we're on right now feels very much like a North American corridor, very, very wide. And, and yet we have a safe active mobility facility on, on both, both sides, sides. And, uh, and tram running on grass yeah. in the middle. This is brilliant. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, well done. <laughs> yeah. What has that transformation been like? I'm sure there have been critics and you know people who don't like the change there how's, is, the, how's there... the city navigating that how do you all help you know help people alleviate the fears it's a step-by-step -step approach and yeah. it takes a long time a here the, the bike path narrows <laughs> yeah. yeah not only did the bike path narrow but i heard him coming oh up yeah behind. yeah this is we should actually yeah. walk uh, there so we, I can show you the, um, this is the crossing. Okay. Traffic light, when you're approaching mm -hmm. this intersection, uh, it shows you mm -hmm. which direction is the fastest. Ah, brilliant. Excellent. So, so this was one intervention. Yeah. And um, at the same time, we again also created more space Right. Wedding uh, space like here. Yeah. Um, right. So when you're entering here, you can either choose straight or left. Right. And it'll and let you know which one's quicker. Yeah. yeah. And how does it let you know? Does it tell you? I will show you. Okay. Yeah. Let's go see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear the tick as well. Yes, here it is. Yeah. Good. We were just next. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good Be point. Patient. That's a good point. Is that. If we want to encourage more people to walk more places, we need to make it, you know, more convenient and not necessarily having them feel like more okay. More convenient and see, yeah. and then it boom. turns red. We Ooh. were we started Ooh. walking yeah. immediately, yeah, and we are not able to cross yeah, yeah. in one turn. Yeah. So just imagine. And then here oh, we are. here it goes again. And there it goes again. 
We yeah, need to the, focus yeah. also from the perspective of the more vulnerable people among us. Right. Um, uh, or maybe people in a wheelchair, you know, sure. uh, that are not as fast as a 30-year-old guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one I of those elderly guys. <laughs> I'm almost 60. <laughs> yeah, not talking about you, dude. You're old. <laughs> <laughs> but no, good point. I mean, it's, and these are the types that from a behavior change perspective, when we want to re uh, reinforce and encourage people to consider that active mode, we, yeah. need, we need to do what we can as city designers to make it the easy choice, the comfortable choice, the convenient choice. The convenient choice, yeah. yeah. And we can do so by redesigning our streets, but mm -hmm. also by simple interventions on just uh, yeah. another setting of traffic lights. Yeah, yeah. So let me show you uh, where... Ah, yes. Brilliant. So yeah, as we're approaching, it gives you that indication. It shows you uh, uh, mm -hmm. which direction is yeah. the fastest to go and ride further down south. Yeah. And it just changed as you were as you were uh, pointing there. So ah, nice. Yeah. yeah, so it worked. <laughs> Great. And again, we'll 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 have the overhead um, of this as well. But again, this is indicating that because it's a two way cycle track on both sides, you have that ability to go this way and then across or as we saw before it was that way and then across so yeah, yeah. and Neat. knowing that there's a flow of 15,000 cyclists a day mm -hmm. on that side and also a huge amount coming from this direction yeah here again we needed to create more space to cross in a safe manner right right yeah we will now cross the crossing mm -hmm. okay. uh, and turn left yeah and then we will ride along this temporary uh, bike lane. And then we'll cross to the right. Okay. To the uh, southern part of the city. Excellent. Over the Erasmus Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, okay. Now I guess it's this side. Yep, I would. <laughs> my prediction is yeah. it's gonna be this side <laughs> since we just lost our light. <laughs> yes. And. The intuitive nature of it is so important because you do want to make navigating by walking and biking intuitive. You don't want to have to like figure everything out and have it be complicated. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's, it's more comfortable. Yeah. I cycle here a lot and I don't have to wait anymore yeah, yeah. because there's always an option. An option, right, yeah. And uh, it's also because we can connect it to the flow, so they can give more green yeah, in yeah. favor of cyclists. Yeah. And what we're seeing too is that as this gets more comfortable, you're seeing more families. And so you see yeah. moms with their children being able to ride. Cycling with their children. Yes. Parents and here, I think, they are willing to let their children ride their bikes to school yep. as long as it's a safe cycling infrastructure. Right. So it's not a very attractive intervention, but it did work. I mean, right. this used to be a car lane. Uh, and yeah. uh, on this side where we are cycling, yeah. it's our direction. Right. And you can cycle on the other side when you're heading towards there. Okay. So next year this will be uh, a wider bike lane. Right. We're turning to the right here. Okay, and there's the temporary, you can see that. Yeah. Right there. So that's one of the office. Uh, that's one of the office buildings mm -hmm. of the municipality. Okay. The middle tower. That's where I work. Okay. The 28th floor, with an amazing view over the city. Yeah. But I do believe that we are working in our tower. Right. 
but in our work we collaborate with the city right we need to go out on the streets more talk to people right get to know what they are willing for what they are asking right this and that also gets back, helps that gets back to what we were talking about earlier exactly yeah when there's that fear of change so when there's a community that you already got to know yeah it's easier to get things done right we also try to connect to locals that um, have ideas so areas where we feel the energy where people are willing to change right try co to connect with them we also did a lot of tactical interventions mm -hmm. to show what the city could look like yeah so facing angry people or people that just feel fear of change it is a an approach on all different levels where we our project leads for example they need to connect to the neighborhood we need to collaborate with the local community and then still of course there's always people against yeah but we need to focus on what lots of times is the silent majority. Right, yes, yes. That's such a good point. Yeah, the silent majority is oftentimes those people who don't have that luxury of being able to come to the, the meetings and speak up. Um, oftentimes they don't have the means, uh, you know, to, to be that privilege to be able to engage mm -hmm. in the process. And sometimes they're just, you know, the silent majority of they, they're just busy with their life and yeah. you know they may not have the them. ability yeah they can't be and not everybody can be an advocate no <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's good that's okay but we need to be able to interact and yeah. engage with the community exactly yeah so that their their fears can be addressed yeah yeah we'll stop here okay turn right I'm just thinking if you want you can go and join me mm -hmm. in the office building so you have an overview oh yeah of the city and you can for example also film this mm -hmm. harbor basin that okay. I'm there yeah that'd be great yeah just for a couple minutes and, and then I'll let but you get I'll, back to work yeah I'm flexible yeah, yeah. I mean yeah I um, don't have an appointment and I do think it's nice for you to to yeah. get this opportunity. Thank you, yeah. I won't pass an overhead view away. <laughs> <laughs> we can go to the 40th floor. Okay, nice. Um, so yeah, this is um, one of the, um, the harbor basins. Mm -hmm. And the city is going to invest in these huge projects, these uh, green city projects, and this is one of them. Okay. If you look right behind you, yeah. the city is going to develop a beach, an actual beach mm -hmm. within the city center. Yeah. And there's lots of housing going to be added here as well. Yeah. Again, part of this densification strategy. Right. And to connect this area more to the neighborhood on the southern side of the harbor. Okay. We are now riding we are on the southern part of the city okay. and we see that there is a um, more deprived neighborhoods and we also mm -hmm. want to connect those neighborhoods to these attractive green areas. Right, right. But this is an, uh, a nice attractive area. Yeah. And let's cycle there to the bridge. Yeah. floating park oh nice and again uh, bringing in green elements to the city nice little floating park floating parks yeah. floating offices a floating restaurant and as we are a river city 
We do not only have uh, subway and trams, mm -hmm. but also water taxis. Ah, yes. Bringing you from one side of the city to the other. Fantastic. And it seems like, uh, again, lots more housing. Lots too. more housing. Yeah. Oh, that was. Um, <clears throat> so we are cycling underneath one of these buildings. Mm -hmm. um, this area has been, well, one of the important areas where we added more housing right. uh, and offices. Yeah, yeah. And talking about active mobility, it's all about connections. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing connection. This little, this bridge here, walking and cycling only. Right. Connecting the Wilhelmina Pier to the area here. Uh, mm -hmm. And it be now you're way faster mm -hmm. uh, because it's islands. Right. It's not, it's not islands. What is an island? Yeah, a bunch of islands or no. archipelago or, or... No, but one part of the island uh, is still... Oh, connected, con peninsula. Connected, a peninsula. Yeah, 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 a peninsula, yeah. So, so it's, it's like uh, a peninsula. The, the bridges connect uh, connects yeah. these two peninsulas. Yeah. So in the network for walking and cycling, this has been of a great importance right. for people living here, yeah. going to the other side. Yeah, yeah. See just how gorgeous that view is back there. More construction happening here. Very nice. And that building, mm -hmm. the one there in front, that's mm -hmm. um, Hotel New York. Oh, yes. It's the area where the um, Holland America mm -hmm. uh, line, where the um, the um, boats used to yeah. to sail to the to the United States from That's here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They would they would stay at Hotel New York there, and uh, they'd set sail and off to Ellis Island in, off New, we go. in, New, in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, and they'd get checked in at, at Ellis Island. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe some of my relatives some time ago. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We are all connected. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a historic little place right there. That's Rotterdam, historical yeah. buildings. Yeah. Right next to modern architecture. Yep, yep. I'm going to park my bike here. Okay. And the entrance is here, so okay. I'll meet you here. And then this construction right here, this area here, this is going to be um, more buildings, more development? Among others. Mm -hmm. So on the edges, there will be added more buildings mm -hmm. for housing. Among, um, and then a very important part of this project is the park that we are developing here and the beach. Ah. So yeah. uh, this land is now created to be able to develop the the area yeah. in a mixed use. And it's going to be possible to make um, a lap around this harbor basin ah. to walk uh, the, the Rijnhaven. Yeah. Very nice. And behind that, you'll see another basin, that's Maashaven. And we're going to add another park there as well. Right, yeah. Very so nice. that's part of the, um, this greenification strategy. Right, right. Yeah. And it, what is important to connect these parks 
to the neighborhoods behind it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to connect the green structure there mm -hmm. to be part of uh, that the park is part of a comprehensive green structure right yeah. connecting all the dots from local neighborhood parks mm -hmm. green streets mm -hmm. to these bigger city-wide parks yeah yeah it's like the the chain of parks the chain the of parks yeah, yeah. exactly it's like the yeah Different cities have called it various things. Some like the, the crown, you know, a, a, a crown or a, a circle. Yeah, of or the yeah. green pearls. The, the green pearls. That's what we yes. call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the green pearls. And from this position, you can see that the city yeah. is actually quite green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it could be better. There's yeah. differences between areas where we see there's a lot of heat stress, for example, and mm -hmm. that's the areas where we focus to invest in more green. Yeah. And also there in collaboration with the local neighborhood, with right. the community. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Rotterdam with USA Besselink. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription link down below and ring that notifications bell. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.